Welcome to KK at 100. I'm Alice Banda. In the program, we talk to Honorable Venon Mwanga. And as you are aware, Honorable Venon Mwanga has had an illustrious career in government of the Republic of Zambia, uh, where he served under several presidents and at cabinet level and also uh, served as a diplomat in Britain, in Russia, and the United Nations. Honorable Mwanga has been the go-to person and has been a reservoir of information on the workings of government and the civil service. Sir, you are welcome to this interview. You are welcome. We hear you came across KK on one of your visits with one of your relatives. Tell us about that visit and how it went. How you met KK in short? I, um, I first met KK in 1960 um, at the old Freedom House on Freedom Way in Osaka, where the headquarters of UNIPO was at that time. And uh, I went there because I had made up my mind that I needed uh, to make a contribution to the struggle for independence. So the Secretary General of UNIP at the time was a man called Mainza Chona. And I went to see Mainza Chona, who had been a close family friend, my, my dad. And um, I told him that I wanted to meet KK. He said, fine, let me walk you to his office. So we walked across, went to KK's office, and he introduced me to President Gaonda. So I sat down and said, oh, young man, it's good to see you. And so Manza Chona left the two of us to talk. So KK started asking me questions about various things and what was happening on the continent. And I said, no, I've been following these in Ghana, the struggle, and in Guinea, and I know the leaders as well, Kwame Kroma and uh, Ahmed Sekuture in, in Guinea. And KK turned around to me and said, how does a young man you age you know, get to know about things like that? I said, well, my dad uh, made sure that I'm informed about this thing. My dad was a, a teacher, headmaster of the only black upper primary school for, for Africa in, in, in Livingston called Shungu. And Mr. Mainza Chona then was working in Livingston. I remember his official title, that's before he went to study law in the UK. His official position in the High Court was African Clark Stroke High Court interpreter. So he used to come to my dad's house quite a lot because later on my dad became president of the Northern Rhodesia African Teachers Association. And uh, Mainza Chona was a very regular visitor. Almost every week, he used to visit my, my, my parents. And I would interact with him first. So we started talking with KK. He said, well, um, I've never met a young man who is as knowledgeable as you are about what's happening in the world. I'm really I'm amazed, I'm surprised. I'm told you want to join the struggle. I said, yes. Um, why have you chosen UNIP and not ANC? I said, well, because uh, UNIP represents what I believe in. UNIP is more aggressive in confronting colonialism, and I found ANC a little more on the passive side, and I don't think I'll fit in into their setup. So that is why I've decided. He says, you come from a well-to-do family. Do you realize that in the struggle, there is nothing that is offered to KK was telling you. Uh, it, it's not a job where you'll be earning a salary. There will be a lot of difficulties. And you probably go without food and without this. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. And I'm ready for it. That is part of the sacrifice which has to be made in order for our country to gain independence. So we parted the set, I will see you again, definitely. 
So I went back to Mainz, the Chavana's office. I said, he said to me, oh, you spent much longer than I thought. I said, yes. He was asking me a lot of questions and I was answering. And so he said, are you really sure that you want to join the struggle? I said, yes. On a full-time basis, I said, yes. And um, so I went away and I was told to come back the following week. When I came back, I was told that I'd been appointed by KK as a provincial youth leader you know, for UNIP in Southern Province. And the headquarters at that time was in Monza. So that is how I, I started uh, interacting with KK, 1960. At that time, the Organization of African Unity, or you had not yet been formed was formed only in 1963. There were two informal organizations which existed, very informal. One was called the Casablanca Group, which was the radical part of the African continent. The conservative part was called the Monrovia Group. So we were nicknamed the Casablanca Group because of our radical views and the fact that we wanted colonialism confronted more radically than was happening uh, up to that point. So when we got to uh, Murungush Rock, the Casablanca group decided that no, we have to press our leaders to accept that there, there should be what we described then as a master plan. A master plan. In, in Venekia we called it cha cha cha. Mm. Uh, we still have roads named after Cha 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 Road. That road came from there at that time. And that um, we wanted a more uh, radical confrontation with colonialism. I'll take you back to the time when you came back to work at the intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, you must have worked closely with KK. Yes. And this year we are celebrating 100 years. KK. Yes. I'd like you to share. How dedicated was KK to duty? I must say that uh, of all the presidents I've worked with, and I've worked under four presidents, he was the most hardworking president I worked with. He was dedicated to work, worked, 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 and that culture was transferred to people like myself at a young age to see what it means, what dedication to service means. And in, in those days, it was not about self, it was about country, it was about working and serving the people. So I must say that uh, I got that culture you know, from KK myself, I got it from him. Because he used to work very hard and he used to knock off late. He started early and knocked off late. And I carried that into my various portfolios later on, which, which I was given. And I used to leave my office in 1930. And it just became normal for me. I would catch up with what has happened during the day and make sure that I clear my desk. The following day, start afresh. And he was very hard working very dedicated, and he had a lot of attention to details. If you want to give KK a report, it, it, it had to be a report which had the details, um, so that you can answer questions from, from him, because you can be sure that he would ask you questions. What about this? What about this? Did you consider this? Did, did you do that? Did you? And he always said to people, because he was criticized by a number of his fellow leaders because of his association with me. He used to say, they used to say to him, why do you give this young man so much responsibility? He said, I give him responsibility because he works hard and he's, he performs. He performs the duties for which he has been appointed. And I want to assure the nation, for as long as he continues doing this, there will be no position in Zambia which I have not given. 
which other people found very frustrating. So very frustrating. So the, I, I used to be called the, uh, a blue-eyed boy of KK. I say, oh, this one is KK's boy. It's KK's boy. He says, he, there's no limit for him. <laughs> he can occupy whatever position he is. So I, I, I became very close to him because as head of the intelligence service, it meant that I had to report to him certain things directly to him on a very regular basis uh, to say, well, and, and that time, it was not the best of times for Zambia because we had wars going on in Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, Southwest Africa, now Namibia, South Africa, and Angola, in Mozambique. Um, we had wars going on with neighboring countries, in, uh, colonial. The Portuguese, the, the rebels in Zimbabwe, the apartheid regime in South Africa. So it was not an easy time to be president. It was not an easy time to be director general either. Because almost on a daily basis, something was happening. And you had to evaluate this and come up with answers so that the president is kept informed. And then we also hosted, as you know, leaders of liberation movements from all these countries I mentioned. And uh, hosting leaders of liberation movements was not easy. Uh, we set up a liberation center on Chilumbulu Road, which is now, it's now a, a staff college for the Ministry of Defense. That used to be the liberation center. ANC of South Africa was there, PAC of South Africa was there, MPLA was there, SWAPO was there, ZAPO, ZANU, they were there, MP, uh, FRELIMO was there. They were all best there. And we had to uh, take care of them and, and to make sure that we protect them from harm. KK, as I mentioned, turns 100 this year because it's still alive in our hearts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what, what are some of the things that we can emulate from KK in this, this generation that can you know, bring development to Zambia? Well, first of all, uh, commitment. Um, there is a difference in levels of commitment between that generation and this generation. Um, we obviously believe in different uh, philosophies and uh, different norms, but um, commitment is something that, 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 that we need and caring for one another what is needed that when we are given responsibilities, duties, we must fulfill them with dedication and total commitment to those. When I talk about caring, it reminds me of what happened in 1961. Um, KK got in touch with me and he said that he wanted us to go to Sinazongwe. He wanted to visit Sinazongwe to go and meet a few headmen and maybe even address a meeting. So I told him, I said, do you, you realize that that is a stronghold of the ANC? He said, yes, we can go to strongholds of the ANC. We've been to so many of them. So young man just arranged him. Let's go there. Made the arrangements and uh, arranged the meeting there. So I traveled there with KK. In that same old Land Rover that is packed at Challenge. We got there and I introduced him and there were a few other people with him. I spoke first and then he spoke and we got a translator for, for, for him. Um, <clears throat> then he allowed questions. He said, it's unusual, we don't normally allow questions, but let's allow questions so that we hear what is of concern to these people. So they started asking him questions. One of the questions they asked him, uh, how come that you didn't support us when we were being moved from where Lake Kariba has been built and brought here? Uh, 
he didn't uh, he, hear you say something. So he said, no, we, I did say a lot. But at that time, we were part of the ANC. Mr. Ngumbola spoke about it. And we got assurances from the, Brit those, the British government that those who had been moved from there would be compensated. And the fact that compensation has not been paid, yes, it's an issue which we'll continue to take up and we'll continue to, to, to deal with. It. Several other questions were being asked. So when we finished the meeting, we were now, it was already getting slightly dark, going to Choman from Sinazongo. We found uh, lions on the road. Yes. So he said, well, OK, there's nothing they can do about us who are in the vehicle. But gee, what about the people who live in this area? And the lions looked really terrible, angry. No! So slowly, slowly, the driver was moving, moving, moving. They left the road and we went through. A hundred meters away, we found the man on a bicycle, going in the direction where we had come from. So KK saw him and he said, stop, stop. We can't let this man go. The lions are going to kill him. We must, there must be something we can do for him. So we stopped and I said to the man, I explained to him in Tonga, there were lions in front, and that uh, we think that he should not proceed. Uh, is there a village somewhere where he could take refuge at least for the night? He said, yes. It was about four or five kilometers or miles then away. So he said, okay, we'll take you, we'll take you there. So the driver and I put his bicycle on top of the Land Rover. The Land Rover was already full. We had enough people with us. Okay, guys, it doesn't matter. Even if it means that he has to sit on my lap, we can't let this man go. He'll be killed if he goes there. So I started a conversation with this man in Tonga. And I said, oh, how is the ANC? He said, oh, I've come from a meeting of the ANC. I said, oh, yeah, how is the ANC? He said, oh, he yeah, is very strong. We, we only... No, Mudala, they used to call him Mr. Kumura Mudala. Nkamuya mm. Mudala, the old man's part, mm. meaning Kumbura's part. So I said, oh, have you heard of a party called UNIP? He said, yeah, we've heard about it. Um, when our people go to the copper belt to sell chickens, mm. they are always asked at markets to produce UNIP cuts. So our people have to carry two cuts. Mm. Uh, in order to go and sell uh, chicken uh, on the copper belt. I said, do you know the leader of that party? He said, oh yeah, we know the name. Uh, Kenneth Kaunda. Kaunda is the, the leader. I said, oh. I said, okay. It gives me pleasure to introduce you to the leader. This is the leader. The man almost fainted. <laughs> he almost fainted. So KK greeted him. And said a few words in Tonga to him. And so I said, oh, he said, are you sure this is the real ground? Mm -hmm. I said, yes. So I said, driver, put on the light in. Put on the light in. He looked. Yeah, he's the one. Ha. I said, this is the man who has saved your life. He's the one who instructed us to stop so that you don't proceed because of the land you found. Mm -hmm. So you have to thank him. Yes. He's the one who made that decision. So we started thanking him. And, and uh, after the man dropped, he said to me, what about yourself? What is your name? So I told him, oh, my name is Renan Mwanga. Are you by any chance Samson Mwanga's son? I said, yes, I am. So, oh, yeah, we, we have heard about you. You have been with UNIP for some time. I said, yes. Mm -hmm. So he said, so if I come to Choma, I said, you should come to Choma. You come and 
check me up, contact me when you're in trouble. We didn't have those phones in those days to begin passing out numbers. So this man came to Choma. He looked for, he just asked a few people when he came. And they said, no, no, we know where he is. Everyone knows him. So they brought him and said, do you remember me? I couldn't even remember. So I'm the man who said, oh, I see. I said, no, 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 I remember everything. He said, no, I've decided that I'm going to work for unique for Kaonda. And I want to make sure that I convert a lot of headmen and people around there. This is not the man we are being told about. We are told that if, if you meet this man, he's very dangerous, that you, he's going to kill you, he's going to do this, that and the other. I said, no, he is a man of God. He never does that. That is being said by his enemies. And he became a uh, the district chairman of, uh, of, of UNIP in Sinazongo, and Sinazongo became a district. So those are human stories, human interest stories, which uh, for me I remember from, it was a long time ago, but I remember them like yesterday, because that act of goodness you don't find in too many people. I think you also believed in humanism. I yes. Before independence, we would go to school and clean up. Yes. And I think, I don't remember the outbreaks of cholera during that time. No. Humanism, uh, he, he introduced humanism, part one and part two, we were all part of, uh, or part of it. Uh, he even wrote a book, A Humanist in Africa. And um, so uh, humanism, it meant that you know, we all had to work together as human beings, as children of God, cooperate to do good for other human beings. Um, and true to that, before we became independent, KK stressed the importance of one Zambia, one nation. That we have got 73, 72, 73 ethnic groups in Zambia. That one Zambia, one, all of us are one under this umbrella of Zambia. And, and, and we must be grateful to him because I know what ethnicity has done in, in other countries. And we, We've lived in a country where ethnic groups uh, have worked together. During the independence struggle, for example, there are a number of people who, 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 that I met during the struggle. I didn't know where they came from, which province they came from. It was not important. What was important was to liberate the country, that's all. And, and in a way, you know, in my family, we continued that spirit the KK spirit of humanism and bringing people together. Mm. And because we, I believe that you know, that was the right thing to do. So uh, we must be grateful that we had leaders like him who were foresighted and who foresaw that if we did not work together, mm. there would be conflict, ethnic conflict in the country. Mm. After 60 years, we, we have not had any ethnic conflict. And we have, had, we have lived in peace with all our neighbors because he also attached importance to good neighborliness. Each time there was an issue, it's, young man, go and sort it out. Mm -hmm. You go to those countries, sort it out, sort it out, and we made sure that we lived in peace with, with all our neighbors. So that is something which this generation needs to learn, that one Zambia, one nation, it's not just a slogan. We must leave it. We have to leave it because that is what the founding father of our nation uh, proclaimed. And, and as part of our support, we must live as one Zambia, one nation. Well, viewers, on that note, we come to the close of this special interview where we featured Honorable Venon Mwanga from his residence right here in Olympia. On behalf